This is the 217 Recovery Podcast with Corey Winfield. Hello, please listen to this important message. Your student loan has been flagged for forgiveness. We are able to remove your payments today. I'm going to need your number, lady. I really do need that number. It's the 16th of June, 2023. My name is Corey Winfield, and this is the 217 Recovery Podcast from the North Studio yet again. And special guest Mitchell in the studio joining me. Mitchell, how are you doing, man? I am student loan free. What? Which feels fabulous. Yeah, see, they, they give you money, and they're like, go to school, and you're like, okay. Marnie is always like, get me. She's like, you know, you got to pay that back. And I'm like, well, do you? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody was telling me all about it yesterday. I'm like, well, if you don't, then it might have been Jeremy. No, it wasn't him. It might have been Norm. It was Norm. And he's like, yeah, but if you don't pay that back, then other people, they're going to increase the tuition because blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, hold on, Norm. I did. I told him, I said, hold on. You know how I tell my stories. It happens just like I say him. So I said, hold up, Norm. I was like, just calm down a little bit. I added some cuss words in there. I was like, so just shut Norm. He's like, all right, bro, I get it. But no, no. He he said that you have to pay them back. And I said, no, Norm, the f*** you do. <laughs> and <laughs> so then we go into this whole debate. And I was like, look, man. It's, it's a school. First of all, college is a business. It's a business. They make monies. Okay. And then there, I had this, this one guy was trying to tell me about how he didn't do bad things to people because of the age difference. It was because back in the day, women used to get married off at 12. That's pretty GD young, my opinion. He said back in the day, they used to do that. They marry them off. But then when school started becoming a business, they started realizing, wait, look, we need to keep these kids in school. Then they need to go to college and then we can get funded from the state. It'd be like me and you going, hey, let's start a business. I'm really bad at analogies, so just stay with me. Where we kill spiders. Mm. Okay, we're going to kill spiders. That's, I, that's our business. There's one lurking. There, there are several always lurking. You eat them. And you don't even know it because I mean, it's I had a personal experience today. We'll get listening right now. <laughs> and it's, it's crazy that I'm going to start a business with you that we're killing spiders. Yeah. Okay. And then, so what I do is I go around and this is already, I don't, I'm not sure how I'm going to connect this together as like the school thing. <laughs> it's not, it's not funny. <laughs> You're like, go for it. Mr. Hotshot. <laughs> <laughs> go for it go for it i think i can see it though i can see the bridge you go around and you kill people's spiders and then you charge them for it but they never pay for it so to make a living you have to pay you have to charge the people who do pay for it more that's what norm's saying it's been so, kind of hard trying to find a like a 19 20 year old what are you talking about <laughs> i'm so confused right now i have to get all up in it oh Self-explanatory. Okay. The drops that you have, are, they're, they're confusing me sometimes. All right, so, no. Not the, not the yeah. way you lay them out. Well, here's what we do. We go around and we tell people about how the spiders are bad and you eat them at night. Then we go to the government and be like, look, man, this would be a much better society if people stop eating spiders because it gives you diarrhea. And then when you're at diarrhea, you can't work, which people, when they work, they give you money, right, Mr. Government? And they go, man. We need to get rid of them spiders. Like, well, that's us, man. Send us in. So we start getting money from the government because people can't just hire an exterminator because these are spiders, deadly spiders that cause diarrhea. So spider diarrhea. You don't even want to f around with those. So people don't have the money because it's so expensive to get rid of them. But man, you really need it if you want to go to work and not get fired because you got diarrhea every day. So you're gonna have to get it done. So in order to get it done. You take out a loan from the government and you pay Mitch and Corey's spider diarrhea killer service. And then we get money. That's what's up, son. I need this to work out for us too, because mm -hmm. I, on the edge of losing my job because of bathroom related incidents. <laughs> 
Yeah, so I have to get all up in it. Yeah, you do. <laughs> but that's that's pretty much how it kind of worked or is working with with the schools and the kids and they're like, "Oh, you got to have this job." Now, I did tell Norm, I said, "Be careful because when you go to school again, because he's enrolled, if anybody wants to know Norm's life, just listen to this podcast. I will break it down for you." <laughs> but no, it happens he, to me too, Norm. It's okay. <laughs> but he, he's going back he, back to school. Back Good for to him. school. Prove to daddy I'm not a fool. Just don't eat any kids that give you diarrhea. I think that's where this is going. No, it's not even going there. I'm just oh. just saying, man. Be careful because when I went back, I had this big ass computer, and I did tell him this. And it's for like editing video and audio. So when you fire it up, it's like <laughs> like jet plane taking off. And I go in there, and these little punk ass kids, 19 year old, 18 year olds, got this whatever. It's a little slim little notebook or whatever they call them. Just and my freaking computer's about to fly off my desk and they're all looking at me like I'm stupid, you know. Yeah, it's like and they're just like okay, old man. Is that um, what we use to make coffee in the break room? It sounds like it. No, we just repurpose your old computer for <laughs> the coffee. No, we have, oh. we have a bun machine at the two seventeen recovery center. Yeah, it it's a bun. But every so often it needs to heat them elements, so it's like choo choo. Yeah. NASA countdown. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty badass. <laughs> At least we have one of those. That's all I'm saying. But <laughs> back to my story here, before I get interrupted, is that them kids, man, that they can be a little ruthless, but they they can dish it, but they can't take it. Is what I found when I was going back to school. Because this one kid, I was like he started like laughing at my computer taking off so i walked over to his little notebook thing and i flipped it up and it landed on the floor and i stepped on it that was really insensitive of you fabulous thank you justin and i said don't I laugh at my i said don't laugh at my computer again boy i went and sat down i said that's what's up I turn my computer off and turn it back on just so it could start up again and he probably wouldn't have been able to even flip your computer over no, nah, he and I made sure he wasn't like a very strong kid. <laughs> I was not gonna I wasn't gonna mess with like, the other kids that were bigger. how did you do that? Like years of preparation every time he was like, Hey, we should go to the gym, you're like, No, no, let's not do that and then a couple years later he you met him again. Oh no, the, like, everybody in that class was laughing at me. I just went to the weakest kid. That's what oh. I do. It was bully people. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I did. Sorta of didn't happen that way. But I told Norm be prepared if you're going to get a computer. They have them that you can loan out, that they loan out usually. And, you know, just watch out, man. But the stuff that you will see happening will blow your mind. The, the things that happened blew my mind. I was in a class that I didn't even open a book for. And it was called Politics. Government. Ah, you were talking about this. Politics. Didn't know. I got an A in that class. Marnie will back me up on this. And she was just like, I can't believe that you did that. Can't believe you got an A. And I was like, well, it's not that hard. And then there was another class. I said, watch this, honey. This is this paper she wants written is about this, this, and this. And she's <laughs> like, yeah. I said, I'm not writing about that. I don't feel like that today. I'm going to write about this. And she said, honey, that's not anything to do with that. I said, I know. But watch. <laughs> Bang it out. Meet the minimum requirement, of course, for the words. Get graded, and it's a B. And the instructor writes, well, that has nothing to do with the topic, but... Um, yeah, good job. Partic participation points, man. Like, you turn it in, you will get a B. And then ask me how I failed art class. <laughs> I don't know, man. It wasn't in person, and it was really hard. I told him, don't mess with art, man. Not you're in person, person art class? Yeah. It was like, read this book and tell me what kind of paintbrush leaves this texture. Huh? I don't know. Stuff. That one, the blue. Talking about paint brushes and textures. Mm -hmm. That's what I was saying the other day. We were just talking about um, Adobe Photoshop. Photoshop. That's what it was. I don't know why I lost that. But um, I heard they have a they have a glue brush, mm -hmm. so it looks like yeah glue. Mm -hmm. Now I've been to a couple different websites on the internet before. Two or three, a couple mm -hmm. different ones. Um, they don't use that for glue. They don't. 
They don't use that for clothing. There's all kinds of brushes. You, you can get like little packs and buy all kinds of stuff yeah. in there. But you can actually yeah. do something that looks just like a painting. I know. I'm just saying like the head one is way that's supposed to look like if you were to dump glue out on something. You're not following me. So, and I was just like, yeah, that's not, that's not what they use it for. I've been to those websites, seen that animation. It's not glue. Are Nothing. You, just let me know when you're done. Oh, do you, do you want me? To, oh, dude, I'm so sorry, man. I was supposed to be nice to you, Taylor. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> Damn, dude, I get it. That's freaking hilarious. Every time you fail, it's really easy to just start oh right over. God. Pick it right up where you left off. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, that's a killer joke, dude. That's killer. Yeah. I promised that when I got out of the car today, I looked at Marnie and I said, I'm going to be nice to Mitch today. That's my goal. So was sad yesterday. She said she'd be listening. Not to the podcast. I didn't even know how hard my job was going to be today with that goal. I didn't know I was going to do a podcast with you. I don't make it easy on you. Mm-mm. I walk right into some pretty easy situations. Mm-hmm. So it's just one of those things where, hey, man, I can. And now you're telling me stories about how you're just naturally a bully. Mm-hmm. I thought you, like, tried. Mm-mm. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not a big fan of bullies. Yeah. Me Usually either. in high school, there was this kid. I'll just share a story with you. And they called him Pat, which is very disrespectful because they were saying that they didn't know he was a boy or girl. Very disrespectful. So huh. His real name was Kevin. But anyway, Ooh, he, he yeah. would wear sweatpants every day. Is this a yeah. glow up story? No. A what? Glow up story. I don't know what that means. Like an ugly duck thing. I don't. I don't know. No. But okay. he just wore sweatpants every day. Yeah. Okay. He was. He was a bigger kid. And can't relate. He kind of smelled like sour milk a little bit, but he sat next to me in drafting class and I would talk to him like, what's up, Kevin? And he was so guarded that he thought that anybody that would talk to him was just ready to pounce on him. Mm. You know, like, hi, Kevin, punch him in the face, you know, I'm just saying like he, but he was guarded. So like he wouldn't really trust you. And so then at lunch, I think I was a junior, we, our friend Danny and I, we'd see him like sitting by himself and Danny was in the drafting class too. And I don't know, we just started, instead of just going to the empty table, like next to Kevin, we started just sitting next to Kevin. And then at first though, he just thought, Oh, what are these guys doing coming over here? They're going to draw attention to me. I don't want that. And, but eventually I think he was kind of like, oh, okay, cool. Like these dudes like really want to talk to me. And like by the end of, the year or whatever graduated like i could walk down the hall and be like what's up kevin he'd be like hey Corey," you know but people would make fun of him pick on him and stuff but yeah i didn't we didn't really like that but i mean i guess i probably did earlier than that when the peer pressure was kind of getting me and i just you know didn't want them to make fun of me so i would make fun of other people so i probably did bully people but but not like bully people but just bad jokes yeah you know about that <laughs> have you have you seen a nature documentary of like I've seen them, yeah. yeah, African savanna? No, you know, like where the lions live and the zebras. Probably, yeah, some, something. There's always that rhino that's not getting messed with, like off in the corner with like this bird that sits on his back. Mm-hmm. So that was me and my best friend in high school, middle school. Anybody messed with my little friend? He got. At the business it only happened like once or twice but that was it and i was like i didn't like to fight or anything i've only been in a couple fights my entire life but yeah but you fuck up a car <laughs> what or wait what what i'm so confused right now i don't even understand that but um no i just always had little i'm a big dude i always had little friends i have to get all up in it yeah and so i mess with them you would yeah Roll up in that base. Based. It's been kind of hard trying to find a, like a 19, 20 year old. Mm. How old are you? I don't even remember saying I don't that. even know what's going on. <laughs> so your mom listens. That's, what do you think about that? Because my mom listens to everyone. She didn't for a while when I put her on a timeout. She didn't like that. You can like, do that? Yeah. And now what she's probably do? like, Corey, don't talk about that. So now she might not be listening well, at this moment. 
Well, but she might. I don't know. But I think she kind of learned. Like, you know, that's just Corey. He just talks a lot of smack and is what it is. We might have to do that to my mom. She doesn't shape up. And see, we should have her on because now, because she doesn't have a chance to talk back. True. And she has historically found ways to talk back about things and get Mm -hmm. on there and care on the Facebook page and somebody's somebody's here. Here. So, did your mom, like when you were going through what you were going through, did your mom play a big role in you getting help services and all that and looking after you make sure you weren't dead? Mm, yes and no. I hate when people say that. Yes and no. Um, she played a big part in making sure I wasn't dead. She made played a big part in making sure that my son was cared for when I couldn't do that. I always thank her for it. But she was also an enabler. Um, and I think we've mentioned that on the podcast before. And I'm not the only one in the family she's been that for. So I really, I have issues with my mom. I love my mom. She's a really sweet lady. It's one of those things where it's, it's not a perfect relationship. But I think we had a podcast one time and I was just like, I wonder what would happen if I didn't have that enabling in my life and if i would have figured it out sooner um i'll always kind of wonder but it worked out so because i wonder how she enabled you though that's a really good question it's hard to explain does she does it hurt her feelings when you say that Probably because and you're not she, you're not meaning it to you're just saying like hey like looking back at it this I wouldn't have been able to do this I wouldn't have been able to get that extra bottle I wouldn't have been able to keep doing what I was doing if she wasn't falling for my shit right and that's kind of what I'm talking about like when I would lose a job she would make sure that I was financially stable and financially stable means I had money for booze yeah you know and I think that she always made sure that I was never out on the street, which is great because I was able to make sure that my son was never out on the street. But at the same time, I feel like if things were different and maybe I didn't have my son and my addiction brought me to where I was going to be out on the street, I might have found the motivation to do something about it sooner. Yeah. She um, would have hit that rock bottom sooner. Yeah. Instead of having a cushy family pillow which is lucky you know it, it, it's it is and i'm glad it worked out that way because like i said my son's a, a involved and my mom was really big in making sure that that all stayed together and i'll always appreciate her for that but she, she must work a lot of hours then not i mean not really Oh, I, I never see her at the family meeting here at the 217 Recovery Center. Ooh. It's been kind of hard trying to find a, like a 19 It's nothing to do with what I'm talking about. Can I find one of those at the family meeting? I don't think so, but. No, I don't think so. Um, yeah, but she It's funny. Be. That's why if she wants to go. It might be at the next one. <laughs> I was talking to her about it recently. Hmm. Um, so it's funny that you bring that up. And now it sucks because now I'm going to think that me calling her out is the reason she's going to come or join on Zoom. Well, she's definitely going to say something about it if you're here. Yeah, but like, okay, it's good to call you out. Cool. Mm -hmm. No, and my mom hasn't been on one either. It's fine. Marnie's mother has. And Marnie's actually going to be talking at the next family to family peer support meeting, which is. That's what I heard. And Monday at 530. That was why I thought it was cool that my mom was going to try to be there because then you can meet Marnie's mom. And Yeah, they didn't want us to talk about it or promote it or whatever. But if you have our 217 Recovery app, you can go to just any meeting and click it, and it'll take you to the room that we're going to be in. So, Am I allowed to ask if we think that any of the people involved that with that meeting listen? They don't. They don't. <laughs> and that's the beauty of the podcast that nobody listens to is you can say whatever you want. 
Well, there's some people. Shout out to Iowa and Idaho. I have some fans in Nagani. I don't know who they are. Hmm. The blog and the Rhode Island. What's up? Yeah. Rhode Island. I got a listener in Rhode Island. It looks like. It's not an island. Did you know that? Mm-mm. Maryland, what's up? New York City. Yeah. New York City's listening. And they're recovering New York City. That would be crazy. I wonder if it's as crazy as LA. I think it's different. I've never been to either. Like LA was more. <sighs> again, here me. Here we go. Ripping on LA again. I'm not talking about the puppy stuff. But the first meeting I ever went to. I always to, go there. It's one of my favorite things to poke at you about. <laughs> it, was, it was my first meeting ever. And no one told me, hey, this is how it works. This is this is it. But so it, when it was a speaker meeting, and I was, no one told me, hey, this is something that they do on these days or whenever. So I go there thinking, okay, this is AA. And it's like, okay, so we go there and we listen to my talk and he was telling the story like he was a director or a writer, like he'd wrote this novel. And I'm like, man, I don't believe any of that stuff. And it was like, he left a cliffhanger because they break in the middle of it. And he's like, and then my kid walked in and the gun was on the table and it didn't have a safety on it. All right, let's break for about uh, 20 minutes, get some coffee and uh, we'll be back here. All right, bro. I was like, you know, I got to come back in. I got to hear the rest of this idiot. And then we went to another one, and it was a speaker meeting. Again, they didn't tell me. So we go there, and this chick's up there, and I didn't even want to go in. I'm like, nah, I've had enough. This isn't for me. And they're like, no, you got to come to this one, too. I'm like, okay. So I go in, and this chick's talking. And she's just drama queening it up about, oh, my God, I did this, and I smoked weed. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> this chick is something else. How she ever get by? But anyway, so it was her story, so she's telling it. And she gets done, and people like stand up and they're clapping, you know. And and she's like, "Questions?" I'm like, "Oh, okay, here we go." And the lady stands up. And she's like, "You know, I gotta say, this is the eighth time I've seen you. It gets better each time. Thank you so much." I'm like, "Wait, is this Leonard Skinner we're seeing? Like, what what is going on? Like, this is stupid." And then the other guy said pretty much the same thing. He stood up. He's like, "Man, I love seeing you. You know, I hear you're speaking. I come out, and man, your story gets crazier and crazier." I'm like. Well, cause what? she's adding to it, you know, like, of <laughs> course it is. That's why she didn't tell you about the acid she did in the van, you know, it's cause it made all the whole creepy duck chasing her into the ocean, even, even crazier or whatever it was. I don't even think it was that cool. It was like, and then I stubbed my toe and I realized I didn't want to trip on acid anymore. And I'm like, oh, you tripping and being on acid are two different things, woman. She's. It's blonde and then nothing against blondes. I'm just saying it, it was ridiculous. So I was like, look, I'm, I'm cool on some AA. And then my cousin took me to an AA meeting. Like after I got home, like year or two later. And he was telling me, cause I was trying to explain to him why I don't do AA. And he's like, dude, like those are speaker meetings. That's not even the same as what an AA meeting is. I was like, okay. So he took me to one and I'm like, Oh, this is an AA. Yeah. This is way different than, then the, those in California where I was listening to like future storytellers or whatever, like, yeah, it's like way an entertainment, different. entertainment thing. But anyway, Hollywood. what's up, New York? I don't know if your meetings are like that or not. Probably some. I feel like they have really big pizzas. That's my point of that. their meetings. Just a slice. Taxi drivers. So you've been listening to, I've been tasking you with episodes of the podcast to listen to. Oh, you were going there. Yeah. And I asked you to listen to one called Accents Detroit Bus Stop. It's like two different titles. And that was. It didn't let down. It had both of those in it. Yeah. And we started it. <laughs> and I, I I had listened to that one for just a minute as I was driving to help my buddy Scott start his podcast. And I was laughing my ass off. Like the first seven, eight, nine, ten minutes or whatever. We're doing these accents and Ryan Beckman was so ridiculous trying to do a French guy. And like his, it didn't matter what accent he did. He couldn't even get close. <laughs> like you could tell him to do an English accent, you know, like talk American. He'd be like, uh, burr, burr, what? like he, he would screw that up. Like he could not do accents. That's why we like to do them. And then Chris, 
So his was deteriorating worse and worse and worse. And I go, this is starting to sound like Ozzy Osbourne. And then he goes, Sharon! Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> at least he acknowledged it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's, Chris is funny dude, man. Like, I, I miss him. I miss him being on the podcast sometimes. And, and just hanging out with him. He was a very funny guy, man. And just going places. Uh, he lost a bet to me one time. And, like, that's the thing. Like, him and Ryan will lose bets to me all the time. And then they were like, how did we even get into this bet? Like, he lost a Super Bowl bet. Chris did. And he's like, I don't even watch football. How, how, why, what happened that I bet on a football game and I don't even care? I don't even watch it. This is stupid. As soon as somebody says bet around me, I'm just like, no, no. So, I mean, I can see the, the twinkle in your eye going, I can't wait to trick him into a bet. But if somebody says bet, I'm like, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm not about that. Yeah, because Ryan, he, he bet. He was like, Green Bay's go to the Super Bowl. I said, I bet you they won't. And if they didn't, he had to dye his hair. He had dark hair, but he had to dye it blonde. And he had to do his facial hair, too, which <laughs> punk ass. He shaved all of his facial hair before. Oh. I was like, you can't do that. That's wrong. But he walked around with gold hair. He didn't do it right, so it looked stupid. But whatever. <laughs> That's what he gets, being a Packers fan. And then Chris bet on the Super Bowl with Ryan. I'm not even in these bets. This is the beautiful part of it. So Ryan had a bet about something. And it was the Super Bowl that Mahomes came back and they beat San Francisco and threw it. And Chris was just like all beside himself. But his original thing was he had to go to the police station at Boyne City and ask where was their bus stop with gold paint around his face. Like he'd been huffing. And <laughs> yeah, I was gonna record it from the bushes. <laughs> from the bushes. And I, Chris was like, "No, man, they're gonna arrest me. I'm, I'm not doing it. They're gonna arrest me." I'm like, "Chris, you have to." And he was about to. And then his therapist called me. He's like, "Do not do that." You guys would have had the greatest TikTok ever. Do right not then. make him do that. <laughs> I was like, "Why?" He lost the bet. And she's like, "No, that's, that's not what you need to do." And so okay, so we changed it up, and I made him wear a helmet. I heard something about the helmet. I remember that. Yeah, and then we had put stickers on it and all kinds of stuff. And he used to say, bullshit ain't nothing or something like that. So I put that on it and I had some 217 stickers. And it was like, it was a baseball helmet, like a little batter's helmet. But it was really small. And <laughs> I think gossed out or something. As he, was, he was trying to get that as a saying, like, oh, man, you gossed out. But. Uh, that was on there and he, so we had to wear that to like five meetings or something <laughs> the whole time into a AA meeting so he wore it i know he wore it to charlotte i don't remember if we it seems like he wore it to Boyne city once but then COVID happened and it shut us down but that was pretty funny because <laughs> people just looking at him like why is that dude wearing a baseball helmet in here it makes me realize that my days of stomping around the Boyne city area were before yours which is weird yeah 2019 2020 mine was mine ended in 2016 2015 2016 so yours was before mine Just a little bit yeah you would have you probably would have lost your shit if you would have shown up to a meeting and saw us you'd have been like not coming back to one of those anymore oh i wasn't an alcoholic yet oh yeah yeah i mean i was but you know if you would have asked me i would have been like no yeah, that would have been interesting to see if, when you got into recovery, if you would have went to a meeting or if, if Justin would have went to a meeting, what they would have thought. That would have been interesting. Like Adam, he got a chance to see that firsthand. I was in treatment with him. Adam works for 217 Recovery. Just let you know that. Maybe and that's why he's so reserved. He's, recovery he's coach. really afraid that you're going to make him jump out. And he's like, if I stay back here, moving that far is only this. But mm -hmm. if I come out this far, then moving that far is that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I get, I get to, I I, I got to work and I walk and you guys are all having fun laughing. And then I come in and it's like, choo, choo, choo. scatter. Well, you didn't. But I was like, okay, guys, like the, the fun ended already. Like, what's, you don't, uh, I don't know. You don't throw scary boss vibes until you're angry. Mm. So or, I like I don't want to say angry. I would say when I don't understand something. I'm frustrated. Yeah. I'm frustrated. Then I ask questions. I'm like, so if, I, if we're gonna you do did, this, you did do that to me, and I was that, like, and, had to 
dodge a so couple confused. times because I'm like, you're asking me questions, uh, uh, dodging a bullet bec- about something that I wasn't actually a part <laughs> of. I love it. And you're like, why does it? And like, like I was there, I was like, I was a spectator for a very small part of that situation. Mm-hmm. It's like, actually, should we get pat on back right now? Stay in the trash out, and vacuum in. Yeah. You know, like, nope. I can't babysit people, man. Crosshairs on me. <laughs> while, you're, while you're other just, no, I know, I don't you down. No, I don't get angry. I just <laughs> ask questions. I just ask them. Yeah, that's all Aggressively I do, asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> Why is the toilet paper on the floor? I don't know. Probably because it fell out of somebody's pants. I don't know. Did you find that too? Mm-mm. Oh, because I found that before and I cleaned it up. And I'm like, wait a minute, who's the toilet paper dropper. Do you like it when I come out and I'm like, who shit is on the toilet? And you're like, well, don't have a DNA kit for that, man. Um, I'm not sure. Today I was like, well, I was, I don't know. I wasn't there <laughs> yesterday. I wasn't there yesterday. Ask some hard hitting questions. But when you said that today, I was like, yeah, it's been like, oh, it's time for me to clean the toilet, clean the, clean the bathroom. It's time. So, so this didn't, didn't have much to say about it. That's what you do for Marnie. Yeah. You know, she's got to put up with all of us here. There's gloves. Yeah, there are gloves. There was a, another thing I want about to go back to the episodes of the podcast. Because okay. Tyrone, that was the first time where I started playing those drops. And I think you hear Chris like laughing hysterically because those are the first times he was hearing them. Because <laughs> Chris and Tyrone were having a conversation, and I was testing out a microphone, and I was like, hmm, let me just direct it over to them. And Tyrone just starts talking about how they had to go to this meeting, and he, they had to walk across town, and this and that, because they didn't have vehicles, and there was no bus there. And Tyrone was just, he couldn't believe that Point City didn't have a bus. And so he, so he was like, man, well, at least in Detroit, we got bus stops. And that's when he did the first man, she, <laughs> you know? And so that was like the first time we'd ever, I'd ever played those on the podcast during that episode. And we used to walk around, but never mind. And Kristen, Kristen didn't even know I recorded it. So that's why he was like dying laughing. It was he's funny like, oh. listening because every time you played it, he laughed harder yeah. until it was like, he couldn't even hold it together. <laughs> He'd do it again, and he'd be like, ah, there, there it is, it's happening again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, another he one I loved it. The Dirty Man Show, which was a very long episode, and I started that, and I was like, I only got like a 30-minute drive. I can't really get into that one. <laughs> was that, like, and that's Justin's favorite episode, he says, so. It was good. I don't know, what was it about? I was working while I was listening to these, so I remember bits and pieces, but if you asked me to write a, a paper on it, I would probably give you something that didn't have anything to do with did it. You, for a B. Did you get something of recovery out of it, or was it just like, hey, those guys are having fun in recovery? I mean, there's that. So, that's that. Just get around like-minded. I was talking with somebody else today about it. Get around like-minded people and, and have fun. And I've been wanting, ooh, here we go. I saw this scientific study recently. Okay. That said, when you're trying to change a habit, I'll have to get all up in it. I've been working on that habit for a while. (laughs) It can take 200 or 400 times of intentionally doing something a different way for you to change your habit but if you do it while you're having fun it can take as little as 20 times of intentionally doing it a different way to grasp and hold on to that new habit it's been kind of hard trying to find a like a 19 20 year old that would have done it right there (laughs) (laughs) those are some good place drops i must say but anyway yeah that makes sense and the same Logic goes along with like if, and I tell people this all the time, if you go to a meeting, get something out of it, man. Like when you leave the meeting and if you're smiling and you feel good, your brain is taking notes. Mm -hmm. And so the next time when something pops up in your head, you're, 
first instinct is, man, I need to go get drunk. F it. Your first instinct is I need to go hit a meeting. And before you know it, if you keep going to meetings and having fun and and doing fun stuff, like that will become a thing. And then it will happen. And you were like, Oh my God, like I just got in a fight with so-and-so or I just lost my job or this or that. And the first thing is not going to be, I need to go get drunk. It's going to be, I need to go to a meeting. Yep. And that, that makes total sense. So doing something when you're having fun. Yeah. And if you don't, do meetings you can get all up in it or look for people of certain age and uh, at least you didn't <laughs> say younger oh yeah which is fabulous so yeah so back to the college thing i don't think i was even talking about people <laughs> you were i don't you're talking about you wanted to sell your fake id oh, oh you're not your fake id he does my not, real id he does not have a fake id uh, why would i need one i'm no. old yeah <laughs> so to say you're 19 or 20 <laughs> and i don't drink <laughs> the id for anything except for getting pulled over yeah <laughs> so back to the college thing though and which are typically 19 to 20 year olds yeah yeah like kind of we bring it back to the original topic <laughs> all the that way around bad analogy <laughs> the the college thing man like how that how that works though is you know the government getting money from you and then the one guy saying you know like hey they only did that so that they could you know, take the people's money and make money off it. And I believe that to be true. And my point to norm on that whole situation was, Oh, that's right. He was here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It was way like 30 minutes ago. We're about this. Mm-hmm. And I was saying like, look, man, it's not like the school's out money. You know, if, if someone signs up for a class, they get a student loan, whatever the school's getting paid, man. They're not losing anything. And their inventory is nothing. <laughs> you know, like what they're, they're paying the teacher regardless. So you can't be like, oh, well, no, then we had to add another student. Every time they add a student, teacher's not making an extra grand, you know, so. They, so like they're, they're buying all of the knowledges and, right. you know, at, at the lower per, to dump into. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not like, oh man, we just wasted 20 pieces of chicken. Like, damn it. <laughs> nope. There's not that. So. Like, th- there's really no, I mean, I'm not going to say there's no need to pay back. I don't know. I'm just not in a hurry to. Well, there's, there, and people are making new ways of doing it, uh, new colleges. Yeah. And to pass a test without, in a class, not even look, opening the book one time. Yeah. Writing a paper, not even had to do with the topic and getting a B. Come on, bro. It, it's a scam. Some people, some people out there are like, no, it's not. And it's not if you don't make it a scam. Like, if you're out actually learning and doing your work and doing what you need to do, that's great. I'm just I'm just saying my experience was like, hmm. It's still a scam. It's just a you, you use that scam very well. Yeah. Because <laughs> you can't pay that much money and it not be a scam. <laughs> right. And then we'll tell them that in order to get a good job, that they'll have to do this. No, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's different ways to learn things too nowadays, and I'm surprised people still go to school. I really, a lot am. of people are deciding not to. Yeah, and then that hurts the bottom line. They're like, "Oh, well, we'll forgive the okay." We have to charge more because there's less people mm-hmm. coming to school. And working at a nonprofit, like I have to pay like the bare minimum of whatever them stupid loan things are, and then after ten years, it's gone. That's a long time. Are you talking about your own? Mine are brutal. I was like, you'll have that paid off in 10 years. I said, the hell I will. I love getting those calls, though, especially the people with the real people mm-hmm. you typically get hung up on. Well, I got to check my college account because it just reminded me that I got a letter in the mail the other day saying final notice. I was like, hmm, that's weird. That means they're not going to talk to you again? Yeah, I would hope. <laughs> that's what that <laughs> means, a, right? <laughs> it said final notice. You owe us $840. I said, wait, huh? My understanding of how college works is you pay them and then they let you take the classes they don't let you take the classes if you owe them money Mm -hmm. so how the f do i owe them 840 dollars? and why the f is this my final notice is my first notice and then they're telling me you you got to the end of june to pay this otherwise it's going to be 1800 i'm like that's some that's some bad credit card scam and attempt to collect the debt stuff like that's people making money that way, man. It's kind of gross. I'm not gonna pay them. I'm gonna dispute it because how the f would I owe them money? 
Right. And Marnie's like, yeah, but you failed the art class. I'm like, me failing a class doesn't mean I have to pay them back money. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a fact. She's like, oh, no, maybe something. I'm like, no, honey, like, they wouldn't have let me take the class. That's my point. So, And, and that's, that's part of recovery, though, is figuring these things out. And if they say I owe them the money, then I'm going to do my best to tell them I don't. And then that's that's what's up. And what we where we go from there, I will keep you posted. But the old me would have just took that final notice. I'm like, oh, my God, no. Oh, I owe them money, too. Oh, throw it away. Throw it away. Let's go get drunk. I don't have it. What am I supposed to do? Can't owe them $1,800. Don't, I don't even have $5. How am I going to pay them $840? Let's see, the old me would have done what I said. <laughs> like, final notice. That means they're not going to contact me anymore. Cool. Get in line. <laughs> <laughs> You want some money? Get in line. You want some money? So do I. About 80 people back there. <laughs> Take a number. Who's going to get Read it the first? Blog. Read the blog at 217. How's your blog going anyway? You're, you're enjoying it. That's what I mean. I am. It's, uh, it's been a really good release. I'm not going to even go there. <laughs> I'm not going to make any sexual <laughs> reference to that. Um, no, I've really liked it. It has been a really good way to talk about just about anything in the actual terminology is fleeting right now, but I've gotten to talk about some really cool things, been able to get in there and it's just a really good source I think, of, cause Justin wrote his blog the other day too. Fabulous. And he, and he did a second one. I was so proud of him. And he was like, man, you and Mitch it was write great blogs. Two paragraphs long. I was like, dude, good job, man. And sometimes like the, the brain busy, the brain stump. You know, if it's something that you're not used to. Okay, here's here's my take on on, on people and, and myself. I was thinking about this the other day because I don't like asking people for money. I am horrible at it. I hate it. It makes me feel uncomfortable. I don't want to do it. Mm-hmm. I run from it. I believe I could be good at it, but I don't really know how to do it. I don't know. I, people tell me, oh, it's not about asking them for money. It's about having them support you and be a part of your cause. <sighs> Again, <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's, well, you believe in yourself. Absolutely. You believe in what you, yeah. And they're like, we can tell you're passionate. You know, just, I don't know. I'm uncomfortable. It makes me weird, you know, so I, I get it. That's what makes you weird? Yeah, I was asking for money. <laughs> oh, I thought the list was never mind. That's it. <laughs> it's asking for money, man. Let me see. Let's see, go crazy. But so I get it where people are like in their uncomfortable zone. You know, like you guys, you're probably more comfortable on the mic than the other guys now. Maybe Justin's a little bit comfortable too. He's done a few podcasts with me. But like when I have you guys voice your promos, it's something that's not natural for you guys. And when I'm like trying to give you instructions, I'm like, smile, smile, you know, and you're just looking at me like, okay, man, like, what is, what do you got going on? You got a camera over there? I don't know, but. My name's Mitchell. I'm Mitchell. <laughs> Come to my meeting where we kick people in the testicles every Sunday or Saturday. I'd, you'd probably get people for that though. Yeah, I mean, people watch Jackass. Well, <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> but you know, so to to say that, you know, some people aren't trying. You know, it, it is not is not right because people do try, but just because it doesn't just take off for them. So, like you, Justin, and writing blogs, you know, and Adam, you know, and me, you know, I don't write blogs every day. It was like once a year, I think, as I throw one out there. But it just it just takes time. And do I know how to write a blog? Yeah. Why don't I more? Mm, lazy. But for someone who's never written one or doesn't really know that kind of world or how to express their feelings, it's going to take them a little time, and they're going to feel very unsure about it, just like I would if I'm trying to ask somebody for some monies. It's been a really cool tool for um, expressing myself. Mm-hmm. When I stepped out of substance use disorder to really try, i mean i guess the disorder do you really get rid of it maybe i don't know the jury's out on that but anyway when i stepped out of the active addiction and tried to remake my life 
I didn't know, and this is how I said it to a friend the other day. I didn't know how to be me and a good person at the same time. Because mm. they're like, you, you're really, you're an introvert, aren't you? And I was like, wait, what? I've never been called that before. But I've never had that conversation since becoming sober. And I was like, you know, I can understand why you would say that. But it's really because I'm just like bottling up everything around people that I consider my friends now. If I let out everything that Mitchell really is, are you going to like him? Are you not going to like him? How's that? So it's been very interesting. And I've been able to kind of dig into that. And it's been a little deeper and a little deeper and a little deeper every single time I do a blog. I could just to get to be goofy, and which I like to do. Just be kind of goofy and talk about birds and weird stuff. And uh, well, it's been good. And I've had a couple people that <laughs> my thoughts are drifting. Um, a couple people have been, you know, like, hey, I really feel like I got to meet you a little, a little deeper and, and understand who you are as a person more. And I was like, well. Sorry, I wasn't able to do that in person. Thank you for reading my blog. So, yeah, it's it's a different way to get some stuff out, and when you can harness that and use it, it's it's beautiful. You know, as another tool. I want to have as many people write blogs as they they want to. You know, I, maybe I should put a sign up front: job posting, blog writer pays recovery, pm <laughs> the pays <laughs> pays in recovery. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus it's from mm-hmm. the break room because like we don't make money off it but it is a tool you know like we pay money for the website we pay money to have the blog and if somebody wants to write a blog for free about their recovery about their life whatever hit me up man this is another thing i like about it like i like being on the podcast with you and, and here and getting on with the other guys and stuff but i'm not great with my words quickly and like speaking and i'm hearing it and I'm, I say certain words as filler words, like, um, uh, like, it's my big one. I hate listening to myself on podcasts because I do that a lot. In a blog, I can take a second to think out the thought and then write out the whole thing and then proofread it. And then the other day, I proofread it a second time and went, oh, I missed even more. I've been doing that. Great. Um, you don't really get to do that in podcasts. That's something I really like about the blog. Yeah, and like especially too with the podcast, is you say something and it's recorded. I have to get all up in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It could be a button, it could be a drop. Yeah. For a long time. Fabulous. I don't know. I I like it. I like being your drop. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but that's that's something that we can use to help move us forward the podcast was something i i used you know it was i was always trying to hide that i was in recovery and when i started the podcast there was no hiding it i just was like i'm in recovery and that felt so good and it was so freeing and it was very powerful and it gave me a little bit more control over my life and where I wanted it to go in, in recovery. So it added purpose to my life, which is something I think a lot of people need. I think it's really weird how that worked for me because I was hiding it for a really long time. And I had just decided shortly before meeting you that I didn't want to do. Well, I, I had known for a long time. I didn't want to do that. What a very large influence in my life. Ex-girlfriend. Um, convinced me it was bad to live that out loud. She was a big believer in the stigma. And I believed her, you know? Well, yeah, there, there are going to be people out there that don't get it, that don't understand, but I guarantee you they know somebody. You know, yeah. and if they're out there making fun of them, then that's that's on them. You know, if it, oh, Uncle Uncle Jeff over there, he he's old, nasty alcoholic. Oh, they, Well, what I'm saying is, them. like, I just opened up, and then I met you, and you're like, hey, this is how we really do it, and showed me. This is you can have this life and and let people know and, and enjoy it. And I was like, I knew it, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> like this guy doesn't seem afraid about his recovery. Yeah, I knew I could do that too. I'm not the videos he makes. 
<laughs> you know, like this dude, this dude don't care. He's got recovery on his shirt. <laughs> like, he, he likes it. I and got to, you told a story as one of the, before I've ever, I even started working here or got on a podcast or anything. I think it was when you talked about me on a podcast for the first time, um, which will always be my favorite because you like pretended to change my name, but you just said my actual name and I was like, smooth, Corey, good job. <laughs> um, but then you, you mentioned me and then somebody that you guys met at like Chili's that saw your shirt mm-hmm. and I was wearing one of my 217 recovery shirts and met my mom and son at Applebee's like last week, got into this really awesome conversation with the waitress there. I think her name's Megan. Megan, if you're listening, hi, I hope your friend's doing well. I'll have to get all up in it. I don't think he meant that. Get at me. Slide in them DMs. <laughs> um, <laughs> No, but she asked for, I had just gotten my cards with Adam's email <laughs> on it, and <laughs> she wanted to know if I had a card because she asked me what 217 recovery was, and she, well, for first she asked me if I was sober, and I was like, yeah, she's like, me too, and I'm like the biggest support for my neighbor who's, you know, going through it, and um, it was a really cool conversation, and I got to, you know, say, hey, we do this, and listen to the podcast, and interact, write a blog, do all this stuff get in contact with us contact with us if you need help and uh it was pretty neat made me think of that time you're we talking about chili's chick and i was like i must be doing something right because i'm doing stuff like Corey and marty talk about yeah it felt kind of bad because i was in the meeting with the gratitude meeting and i had a sharpie and i was like <laughs> i'm really proud of finally having a card with my name on it i'm gonna have these to give out and they said they're gonna get the ones that don't have adam's name on it so i'm just gonna take the sharpie until i get those ones and I'm like hey as much as well, i don't have an email <laughs> and then you do all that and then the very next morning hey you very- got your, your new box man. sorry about that I was like, whatever i appreciate it i really do yeah i was so excited to have cards even with adam's name <laughs> <laughs> kind of big deal now. You know? my Adam spelled right. Adam at two seventy two covers my complaint department. Yeah, so if you have a complaint or you just want to send Adam an email, do do so right now. <laughs> I just, I you know, so we're gonna wrap this podcast up so you can send Adam an email about. Com- I really sh- I should have kept some of them. So if anybody was like, I want to complain, I can be like, here's a card, send it to me. <laughs> <laughs> but like Adam. <laughs> What's going on, buddy? I like, <laughs> because he's like, I've been getting all these <laughs> hate, hate emails. He's got this cool <laughs> uh, meeting. We kind of <sighs> fell on it because I, I wanted him to redo his voice part of his promo, which you can go listen to now before it's gone, uh, 217recovery.com slash meetings. But his new meeting, actually, I think I already took it down. Mm. Anyway, his new meeting is Recovery Dads, which... I think it's perfect. He is a father. If that makes sense. Twice. But yeah, he, he's pretty good at it. You know, somebody did that with him twice. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he started this meeting and I think he's going to have a lot to share. And I think a lot of people are going to be like, that's where I want to go. I want to go talk about this because that is an issue that a lot of people in recovery deal with, especially if you're, you know, a dad, obviously. Yeah. And even if you're not, you can still show up. You know, it's more of like a men's meeting, but recovery dads, you know, like that, that's something that I think will go over pretty well. And he has a flyer for it now. And the other day we were talking about him redoing his audio and it's where he was just like, man, I'm not good at this. I can't do this. And every take just kind of sounded the same, same, you know, and I'm like, pretend you're a dinosaur or whatever I was telling him. Like, well, we brought him some Wellbutrin that helped. I think that's illegal, but that's cool. (laughs) Um, is it's Adam at two seventeen recovery dot com if you want to set up a time to talk to him with the police. <laughs> so that's really Mitch Mitchell, but spelled A D A M. But I, I told him I was like, man, maybe have go home and have your daughter voice it with you. You know, his young daughter. I'm like, have her, you know, be on it. And he's like, that's I heard him mention that he was excited about it, and I thought yeah. that was a cool idea. And I think his promo is going to be the probably the best one out of all of them. Yeah. You know, because. A, it has a little kid in it, which people love kids, most people. And it'll it'll sound cute, and it'll sound like, bam, like, that's what's up. You know, like, that's 
what being in recovery is about, getting your family back and being around your kids and being able to do that kind of thing. And I think, think that'll probably be a really good promo, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. But it's like Adam said today, he's like, maybe that's a God thing. I was like, absolutely was, man. You know, the fact that you couldn't come in here and just rip a promo out, you know, you had to stumble and just say, I can't do it, I can't do it, I don't know how, I can't do it. And to like flip that around and like, well, we'll come up with this idea and then have the recovery dad meeting, you know, it was called up and Adam, which, which was funny. Yeah, it's funny, but it doesn't really tell you too much about it. You know, but recovery dads meeting on Sundays at 10 AM, you know what that's about. And you can get that on zoom. If you got the two seventeen recovery app. I'll be waiting for my royalties because the, the flyer some icon resembles somebody very close to you right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, his flyer, I put that together. It looks pretty cool. Uh, it's, yeah, dads, recovery dads, Zoom. If you're not in Michigan, not in Traverse City, you can't stop by this, the 217 Recovery Center, jump on Zoom. Sunday's at 10. Then if you want to come by, grab a donut, whatever. Maybe you don't want, you're not into recovery, just come come to look for some dads. I wish I wish there was a Wesco just around here. Like, hook us up with dads. free donuts. Huh? We would plug them, like, hey, go to Wesco, get all your donuts. Like, if they gave us donuts. You're already plugging them. I know, because they're good and they're worth it, but there's just not any around here. Wesco probably would. I know they would. Wesco to hook us up. There's one in Fife Lake? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's worth the drive. Uh, well, somebody's me, coming in. If you're coming in to the 217 Recovery Center for you Sunday meeting, mileage every Saturday morning to pick up. Oh, it's Sunday. I'm not doing it for Adam. He can get his own five flake donuts. <laughs> yeah, just let us know. Or if you know of a place <laughs> that would like to donate donuts to our what meetings, if, but we really do need some place like that, though. What if? Okay, I'm gonna rabbit trail here. What if you? found the one wesco that does the fresh donuts and they're like that hub of wesco's where they make all the donuts and the other ones they kind of like send them out to them because i found that with my little grocery store chain that i like to get donuts from this one location has amazing donuts every day the other ones are like they got the donuts from the good store the day before it's disappointing. I think you're you're plugging an entire business, and it might just be that one place. No? And I have several. I think that some of them, I want to say the one in Coloma makes their own, or the one in Water of Lead. Some of them might just make their own, Mitch. Okay. It's not it's that possible. hard. I mean, it is hard, apparently, for some companies. To make tons. And I was ragging on, what's the name of that place down the street? Poop. <laughs> I don't remember it. I almost said it wrong. Potters. Potters. Yeah, I was yeah. ragging on them. But I think I just got COVID donuts because I went there a couple times after and they were, they were just fine. Yeah, the ones that you got to show up, my Tom's donuts were really nice looking. Yeah, they were good. So I take all that COVID stuff back. Yeah. Or the, No, I don't because it happened and they were horrible donuts. But the last two times I went there, they were good. But now I'm trying not to eat donuts. So Well, now you know. If you put COVID in your donuts, they're going to suck. Yeah, unless they're Wesco donuts, and I'll eat those all day. Well, I don't think they put COVID in their donuts. That sounds like a thing the potters would do. Hmm. I wouldn't think they would do that. I don't think anybody would do that. But it was when COVID was happening. and then Oh, you made it sound like they had COVID in their donuts, and then it made them worse. And now they don't put that in their donuts anymore. No, that's the Chinese people. My Chinese people, I mean China. We're putting COVID in ice cream. Just putting it in there? I should have told Justin that. I kept my... And they were coming after me because I had talked shit about them. And so then they started putting on ice cream because they were coming after me. I kept my positive COVID test around that time to use as a weapon if I needed to. If anybody came at me, to be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Stay back. Well, that. It's slow today. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, crazy! I, I didn't make that up though. Well, that's gonna do it for today's episode. Two seventeen recovery dot com is their website. Check out more about Mitchell, his blog, Justin, his fabulous meeting on Thursday. Adam, 
It's Sunday meetings, 10 a.m., Recovery Dad. And you can watch videos, learn more, 217recovery.com, get the app. And you can go through, if you have the app, and just pick a year and go back and listen to some of the episodes from the past. It was a much different podcast, I think. Uh, it was more wheels off. But we were having fun in recovery, and we were early in recovery. And why not laugh is what we were thinking. So if you want to yeah. go check some of those out. Some better than others, but you might get a nugget of info, maybe some that'll inspire you, maybe a laugh, who knows? Bathroom. Bathroom. <laughs> Bathroom. There's that was the Dark Knight episode, I believe. Ghost hunting. You're like, there's a shadow figure. We were ghost hunting? Yeah, I saw shadow figures oh, that day. Yeah. <laughs> I kept going, Bathroom. <laughs> Yeah, good times. <laughs> Check it out. Get the app. It's Whoa. free. It's easy to get the app if you go to our website, 217recovery.com. Just click on the icon. Otherwise, if you go to search it in the app stores, who I don't even know what you got typing anymore. I can't remember. I think you said 217 Recovery all together. On the Android and then 217 Recovery podcast on the Apple, right? No, I think it was just, I don't know. Go figure it out. People are smart. I believe that you can the so number two seventeen and then the word recovery and they need to either be touching or not touching. Yeah. And then, yeah. And if not, if that's too much, just go two seventeen recovery dot com, click <laughs> yeah. the like on. It's pretty easy to find on YouTube as well. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for listening and we'll talk to you next week. And next week got a big week. We meet East Jordan next Friday. Oh yeah. Freedom Fest. Party in EJ. Yeah, and something else is going on next week too. And I don't remember what it is, but stay tuned because this is gonna be awesome. Bye. Thanks for listening to the 217 Recovery Podcast. We hope you come back for our next episode.